this PS2 has some problems. First of all, we're missing the faceplate on the disc tray that contains that nice little rotating PlayStation logo, so that's kind of sad. We also have some unsightly dust in just about every orifice of this thing, so that's sad too. But as long as we can play games, the cosmetic flaws shouldn't bother us too much, right? Well, let's pop in our favorite Rayman game and see if we can play it. So far so good. Kinda sounds like it's struggling though. Uh, dang. Dang. Well, it looks like it can't read the game, so we're still pretty sad. But we don't want to live our whole lives this way, so let's see if we can do something about it. We'll need to open up the PS2, of course, and that begins with the removal of these eight square caps to reveal the screws. I'm using a dental tool, but a plastic spudger or even a guitar pick are also fine options. I should point out quickly that at some point you have to cut or peel this sticker in order to remove the shell. In the case of this unit, that was already done by the previous owner, so I'm good. Anywho, with the screw caps removed, the actual screws come out next. Half of them are shorter than the other half, so I made a note of this to avoid accidentally destroying things later. Now let's flip it over, and with those screws removed, we can lift the shell off. The tape holding this cable down was loose, so I'll peel it the rest of the way, which gives us a little more room to set the top shell down. Now I'm going to attempt to remove the whole disk drive. There's a few clips to release, and then we can kind of just wiggle it out of there. I can't move it much farther than this, because there are a lot of cables connecting to it below. I'm going to get further in from the top before deciding if taking the whole drive out is necessary, and spoiler alert, it isn't. So now there are four Phillips screws to remove here, and after that we can remove the cover of the disk drive, and set it aside. The motion of the drive head does not feel abnormal, so I think we might just need a laser power adjustment here. To go further, we need to get under the disk tray, and the easiest way to do that is plugging in the system and pressing the eject button. Wonderful. Now with better access to the drive components, I can see things are just a teeny bit dusty in here, so I'll clean it up a titch using a dry toothbrush, followed by some forced air and a handheld vacuum. Next up, my goal is to remove the laser assembly from the drive so I can test it with a meter. There are two Phillips screws affixing linear motion shafts for the laser head that we need to unfasten. After that, I use a tweezers to remove the rails. The first one can tuck under and out, and the one on the right needs to be pulled through these two bearings. With the drive head free from the rails, we can unlatch the flex connector and pull the cable. Now that the part is isolated, we can take a closer look. On the side opposite the laser, there are two potentiometers. On the left is for CD, and on the right is for DVD. These are adjustable resistors which control the power output of the laser, and their resistance can drift over time, so we want to make sure they're in the right range to properly read discs. My main focus is the CD adjustment, because I care about it reading games. The time has passed where I will ever use a PS2 to watch a DVD. Sorry, bud. Checking these with a multimeter, the game potentiometer is reading... 1400 ohms. And the DVD pot is at closer to 1700 ohms. If I take to heart the info I found on the PS2 home forums, it would appear these resistance values are too high, which considering Ohm's law would suggest the laser power is too low, and thus causing a disc read problem. I don't think I need to go all the way to the minimums shown here, so instead I'll look for a middle ground value and just test if it works. Let's use a small flathead bit to manually make the adjustment by hand. A clockwise rotation will decrease the resistance, while counterclockwise will increase it. With that small adjustment, we are now at 1074 ohms. I'll shoot again with another very fine clockwise rotation. And while I'm here, I'll give a best effort on the DVD pot as well, even though I said I didn't care about it. Checking again, the CD or the game pot is now at 839 ohms. And that seems like a good number between where we were and what the internet says the minimum should be. So I'll leave it at that. 
The DVD pot is now reading 952 ohms. And again, I'm not as concerned with this one, but it seems to be in a good spot. So let's move on. Now we'll reassemble and see if those laser adjustments did the trick. After reinserting this flex cable and closing the latch, we can lower it down and set the first rail in position. The second rail goes back through the bearings and sets in the catch of the plastic liner, just like the first one. We'll fasten each screw for the rails, test the motion, and clean the lens with rubbing alcohol for good measure. Time to close that disc tray. And again, we'll plug in the system and have it do that job for us. Since I partially removed the drive earlier for no reason, I'm just going to snap it back into place real quick, and then fasten the cover back down. As I begin to close the shell, I stick the tape on that flex cable back on the cover of the optical drive, and I lean it towards the face buttons as I start to help avoid any snags. Now we can flip it, and get the screws and caps back in place. Well that's that. It's time to see if what we did was good. And it was good. We're reading games now. It's very common that a disc read error on an old console is resolved by recalibrating the potentiometer tied to the laser power. In many cases, I've also found it necessary to reflow the solder joints, but this time it wasn't needed. You'll notice when it's necessary if you can't get a consistent reading from the multimeter. And you'll find those exact scenarios in many of my other videos. So go check them out. Thanks for watching this one, and I'll see you next time. What's up with you? Ever played a video game before? Are you missing on purpose or what? Come on, kid. Hey, I like that outfit on you. Wanted to come off. Don't try to score big. This manual looks like a blast. It's bound to be one or two useful things.